Hello. Welcome back again, with me, Jason from Latilidi. This time, we gonna learn how to create particles glow with symbolism tool. But, before we go any further, it's good if I give a little explanation about the symbolism tool. You can find the symbolism tool in the tools panel. You can recognize it with the sprayer icon. The first tool in the symbolism group tool is the sprayer tool. With this tool, you can create a group of symbol instances that called symbol sets. You can play with one symbol, and then, using it again with another symbol. As you work with symbol sets, keep in mind that the symbolism tools affect only to the symbol, or symbols that selected in the symbols panel. For example, open the symbol panel, but, if the panel symbol doesn't appear in your collapse panel, then go to the window menu and click symbols. Click symbol libraries menu. For example, I choose nature set. Then fish one. Close symbol nature panel and back to symbols panel. Make sure that the fish symbol is selected. Then you can play with the sprayer tool. Of course with a left click and drag. If I move drag faster, it will make the symbol having more spaces. But if you drag slowly, it will be more closer. Besides that, you can freely experiment with double clicking the sprayer tool icon to bring up the symbolism tool option panel. Diameter determines the brush size. Intensity sets the change rate. Symbol set density sets the amount of symbols placed within a given area based on a formula. The higher the number, the denser the symbols will be. Below this, there are several other symbolism tools. Their function is as a modifier for the symbol set that has been made. If you create a mixed symbol instant set, you can change the orientation by using symbol spinner tool. To change the size use symbol sizer tool and so on. For the moment that's all I can explain, if there is something you don't understand, you are free to ask in the comments column. Okay, now we return to the tutorial how to make particles glow in Adobe Illustrator using the sprayer tool. First, we must make the background, the reason is because the glow effect that we will make is influenced by the background color that we choose. For the background, draw a rectangle following the size of the artboard using rectangle tool. Don't forget to set stroke to none, and the fill with R, 0, G, 15, B, 26. It's look like a black color, but it doesn't. This is something that really needs to be considered. Do not choose a pure black color, because if not, the glow effect that we will make cannot work at all. Once again, the glow effect that we will make cannot work at all. The second step making the background is to add a colored light bias. Create a new layer and lock the first layer. Make circle with ellipse tools. Open gradient panel on window menu. In gradient annotator over here, we can see black and white gradient color as default. We can change it by double clicking the color stop. For the first color stop set to 0 RGB which means the color is black. For the second color, we use dark red with R, 36, and the rest fill with 0. Don't forget to set gradient to radial. As we see here the circle is not blend well, because they have different colors. So, we have to blend it. Just go to the window, select transparency. In the transparency panel, there are several blending mode options. In this tutorial I use lighten, to blend dark colors on a circle against the basic colors on the background and brighter colors will still appear. Make another circle with gradient color. Leave the first color stop with black color. For the second color stop, set the RGB to 171. Location 5%. Midpoint 62%. After the first and the second color stop is set, create two another color stop between the first color stop and midpoint. To create more color stop, just hover your cursor under the gradient annotator, until your cursor has a plus sign and in left click. After the color stop is there. Double click to change the color. R, 171, G, 58, B, 0. Location 26%. Midpoint 55%. For the last color stop, follow the previous steps and set the color to R, 171. G, 33. B, 0, location, 31%, and midpoint, 24%.
After the circle that we made is complete, duplicate the circle by pressing Alt key on Windows and lift it to the side of the first circle. On this circle, we will create another gradient color. Because this duplicated circle has the same gradient color as the previous one, so, it will be easier for us to modify the gradient to another color. But for this duplicated circle we only need three color stops. So we have to delete one of the existing color stops. Select the color stop that you want to delete, and click the delete icon, to the right of the gradient annotator. But there is a simpler way that I often use, is by sliding the color stop out of the gradient annotator. And, the color stop is gone. For the middle color stop, change the color to R, 116, G, 23, B, 0. Location, 18%. Midpoint, 23%. Just like the circle that we first made, we will blend the black color in the circle with the base color. So we just need to change the blending mode in the transparency panel. For the circle that have lighter colors, I give a screen blending mode. And for the circle that have darker colors, I give color dodge. Now, we just need to adjust the position of the two circles. So, as to cause the impression of refractive light from the side. Here, I change the shape of the circle to an ellipse. I made a lighter circle bigger than a darker one. And make sure the smaller circle is on top of the bigger one. Make a group between the two circles, then set the transparency to 30%. Go to Edit Menu, select Copy, to duplicate. Go to Edit Menu again. Paste in place. Adjust the size until the ellipse looks longer. Now, I will try to make the flare effect on the other side. First of all, I created a circle, with gradient color. For the first color stop, I still use solid black color. And the other, I used purple with R, 149, G, 0, B, 186. I added one more color stop. So, that the color transition was smoother from light purple to black. So in the middle, I add a dark purple with R, 74, G, 0, B, 114. Position, 17%. Midpoint, 24%. The last thing, is to set blending mode to color dodge. Again, create a circle. Made the gradient mesh as solid black on both sides of the gradient annotator. In the middle create a color stop with dark purple R, 74, G, 0, B, 114. 80% position, for the left midpoint set to 82%. And the other one, fill 37%. Blending mode to color dodge. Set the position of the two circles like this. Duplicate this smaller circle by pressing the Alt key while lifting the object. For this circle, change the gradient color setting. The location of the color stop on the left to 48%, midpoint 50%. For the color stop in the middle, change the location to 70%, midpoint to 24%. Adjust the size and position like this, so it looks like a simple flare. For the final touch, create a rectangle according to the size with the R board. Select all the circles, including the rectangle, then right click. And select make clipping mask. And lock the second layer. Now, it is time for us to go to the next step. Creating particles. So, create a new layer to place the particles. At the beginning of the video, I explained a little about the symbolism tool. So now we will make particles using symbolism tools. First, we'll make the symbol. Use ellipse tool, to create a circle. With just a left click anywhere other than the artboard area. Set width and height to 25 pixel, then click OK. Apply black and white gradient color. For the white color stop, set the location to 50%, midpoint 50%. Duplicate that circle two times. Cause we gonna create three type of symbol, multiply the size of the two circles we just created. From 25 pixels to 50 pixels. So 
For the second circle, change the location of white color stop to 10% and midpoint 65%. And for the third circle, set the location to 5% and midpoint to 40%. Don't forget to change the blending mode of the three circles to color dodge. Now, open the symbol panel to turn the three circles into a symbol. Just go to the window menu and look for symbols. After the symbols panel is open, just lift the circle 1 into the symbols panel. Then automatically the Symbol Options panel will appear. Name it, so that we can easily to identify it. For now, leave the settings by default, then click OK. Now, the circle has turned into a symbol. We can recognize it as a symbol, because there is a plus sign in the middle of that circle. We can also see it in the Symbols panel, with the name we gave it. Then, just follow the previous steps to change the rest of the circle into a symbol. Well, now it's time to create particles. But before going further using the sprayer tool. It's good, if we maximize the group of symbolism tools. So, it's easier to use the symbolism tool, without having to access it from the tools panel. Click and hold the sprayer tool, until all the symbolism tools appear, then left click the arrow on the side. This is very helpful, because we no longer need to waste time holding down clicks, and choosing the tools we want. You can also do the same thing with the most frequently used tools that have groups. Now, we just go ahead in making particle. Same as the explanation at the beginning of the video. First, we use the sprayer tool to create random particles. Then go to symbols panel and select particle 1 symbol. Actually this is the reason why I choose to use the symbolism tool. Because, we freely place an object randomly. In addition, we can also change the size of the symbols randomly, using the Symbol Sizer tool. After we randomly set Particle 1, now go back to the Symbol panel, and select Particle 2. Do the same thing as Particle 1. Last add more particles with symbol 3, and play with size. Now, you can see we have succeeded in creating particles randomly, using Adobe Illustrator. Before I ended this video. This is just one of technical process to create some design stuff. You can use one of that technique, or you can combine with another technique, to create more creative design stuff. Finally, if this video is very useful, please subscribe, like, or share this video to help this channel grow. Or if you have questions, or else, about the contents of this video, you can comment below.